What is going on guys, Brown here, welcome back to the F1 2020 My Team Career Mode Here today for part 29 for the Monaco Grand Prix It's been a while since the last one in Spain, apologies for that It's been very hard to have time to edit these videos So we're back now, hopefully can be more consistent That's enough for the rambling, we're into qualifying and you can see there we actually went fastest here in Monaco, which is kind of surprising, but Monaco, probably my strongest track, it's one of the tracks I used to dread, but since I've got a wheel, I've been wrapping around Monaco, and my opinion's changed on it, and I'd love to do a Monaco now. Into Q2, we've run second fastest, and we have a chance of putting this on pole, I'm pretty sure, but... And our first run in Q3, we do go pole ahead of Albon and Lewis Hamilton. But yeah, on to the end of the session, with you can see here we're still pole, and we've gone with set a personal best in the first sector. We've gone purple in the middle sector. Can we improve any more? Looks like we're already on pole, but it is going to be pole position in Monaco we're gonna have enough time to go and have another stab at it but coming round we've still found some time um qualifying's ending I'm pretty sure everyone else has done their lap time so we're kind of just doing this again we found a bit of time we were down in the first sector but through the second sector it's quite a long second sector through the Nobel chicane and now towards to back towards the end of our second lap and you can see we are up and we've actually gone fastest in that middle sector so we've gone from down on our time to best in the session up on our last time because we did go purple in the last lap round the final corner and we come up to the line now we know we've got pole we've gone even quicker and that is our first ever pole as Brown GP. Let's get into the race. Nelson Piquet once said that driving the circuit to Monaco was like riding a bicycle around your living room. And it's not hard to see what he means by that. There's no more prestigious a Grand Prix victory than Monaco, but also none so challenging. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long circuit to Monaco. The cars climb around 40 metres up through Beau Rivage, onto the casino and then descending down towards the harbour through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of the 19 corners here, seven to the left and 11 to the right. There's one single DRS zone as well, so don't expect that to make overtaking any easier today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Brown lines up on pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Bottas, Charles Leclerc and Stroll, Verstappen, Albon, Perez and Daniel Ricciardo, Vettel, Sainz, Pierre Gasly and Ocon, Magnussen, Norris, Daniel Kvyat and Nick De Vries, Giovinazzi, Latifi, Eilert and Quan Yu Zhou. And now it's time to head down to the track. So on the grid it's going to be a fairly simple strategy this one. Starting on the softs, going to the mediums. Something that we tried last year. Hopefully we can pull this off. But yeah, let's get into it. Can we convert our first pole into our first win? It's lights out and away we go in Monaco. And we've got away well. We've got ahead of both and both of the Mercedes. We've covered them off and that's something that we needed to do at the start of this race. There goes the Mercedes all over the back of us though. We head through around the casino and now towards um, Mirabeau, through Mirabeau, you can see Hamilton all over the back of us and now we can see the best camera angle in Formula 1 I don't care what anyone says, nothing beats lap 1 
that the lion's hairpin in Monaco. Everyone jostling past, people having to practically stop to keep those behind them to not hit the back of those in front of them and it's just such a good camera angle but anyway we'll stop about that this is the race and we've pulled a small gap and we're just gonna skip on because we are pulling away from the Mercedes I don't know whether it's the car but I'm I'm gonna sound like I'm picking myself up here I'm I'm quick around Monaco and it's probably my strongest track um, over the over the whole calendar especially this year and there's a mistake from Hamilton there it seemed and Bottas is side by side through this through the tunnel and Lewis Hamilton the guy that never cracks has cracks and is overtaken by his teammates we can see here what happens through Portier I think that is and he just loses the back end. He just steps out on him. And then he, look, he's side by side with Bottas. That's a mistake I'd expect Bottas to do. Not the now in real life seven time world champion. Because he's still six time world champion in this. Because Bottas won the title last season. And Bottas been given an early Christmas present there. But through the swimming pool we go. All the way on to lap 11. You can see there that we have a five and a half second gap to Bottas behind and we're going to come into the pits to make our one and only stop here in Monaco. You can see how dead the rear tyres were. Wow, they were cooked. <laughs> but as those around us stay out, we're going to come in, put on, but we've, we've, we've dropped the clutch too early. But it doesn't matter, we are out. And now we're going to have to do some overtaking because we have come out in traffic and this might hurt us. Although we have, it was crucial to beat out P. Gasly there. We didn't do it and now Bottas into the pits. This is the most crucial point in the race because we can't end up getting held up by these lot because they're going to have clear air. Yes, the gap was five seconds, but it's so easy to lose time here in Monaco but we have come out in front way ahead of those behind Bottas needs to be at the Williams but he doesn't he splits them and Lewis Hamilton's already pitted and now we can get the hammer down down the inside of Pierre Gasly there next on the road is the Renault but the main thing is here can the Mercedes get through these as quickly as I can because otherwise, as long as we don't have any reliability issues, we could be staring at our first win. But side by side, wow, on the outside we go with the Renault. I think that was Esteban Ocon around the outside of Raskas. And that's incredible. Now on the McLaren, round the outside again. Like it's nothing. Next up is the Ferrari. I think that's of Sebastian Vettel. And that would put us I believe back into the lead of the race um, if we get past Vettel and oh we nearly hit Vettel Vettel makes a mistake and I was not expecting that and now we do a trademark move around the outside if you're on my channel watching in um, F1 2019 last season you'll know that I always try to break as late as I can into the Nobel chicane and then go to the inside and cut across the track let's demonstrate there and then get, get a great exit here and absolutely gun it round the outside of someone through the back but all the way on to lap 22 and we saw those behind them um, the Mercedes were stuck behind come into the pits and that has now given us a 15 second lead to the two Mercedes and then it's George Russell and look at the worn engine I decided to put worn parts in as we skip on now to lap 35 the gap behind has stayed around 15 seconds you see it's 14.7 but 
the clouds have come over. It's not meant to rain, but it certainly is very dark here now in Monaco. But as we go through and under the tunnel, see here, this is our very final lap here in Monaco. And now as we head up through Portier, this is going to be an uncut lap round the casino up towards Mirabeau. We have mastered Monaco. We, we, we tried to go for the fastest lap. It didn't really work. Um, round the lights hairpin through Portier 1 and 2. Don't quote me on that. I think that's right. And now out of there through the tunnel and I'm going to leave that there and let you enjoy the final sector. <laughs> Anthony knows what a way is to rain comes down. What a way to win your first Grand Prix! It's our first Grand Prix win as Brown GP. What a place to do it by Master in Monaco. That's it then for another nail-biting Monaco Grand Prix. We were on the edge of our seats the whole time, but they've come through to take a stunning victory. And talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. So we've done it then, I thought this would be something that would be way, way, way out in the distance. But we have won our first Grand Prix as Brown GP. What a place to do as well in Monaco, by Master in Monaco. We managed to convert pole into win. And of the getting our first podium last time out in Spain, what a way. <laughs> we've gone one better here in Monaco. But as you can see here, that has given us a lot of points in the standings. We move up to P6, and that's also going to help us out massively with the constructors as well. As next time we go out into Baku, another street track, very different to Monaco, of course. High speed, tight corners, that moves us up in the constructors as well. And our rivalry with um, Nick de Vries is going well. Lando and I doing well as well. You can see there, we get all our sponsor bonuses, which is incredible as well. And now, going into it, we can now finally get rid of these warm parts. Look at the state of them. Absolutely dreadful. So in terms of the R&D, we're going to be doing an upgrade on the engine. See, we've already done one on the engine, so we might as well do a double one. Our engine is not great as well. I thought about all of the chassis side. We're going to be doing two upgrades on the faculty for the for the um, personnel for improving Lando. But that is going to be the end of this video. I promise it won't be as long as it has been for this next episode in Baku but I'm going to leave you to enjoy the race highlights and I will see you in Baku. Goodbye. <laughs>